What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Idle Heroes. I want to thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget, smash that thumbs up button and share your support. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, you guys, we're here on the Big Daddy account, not because we're going to do anything on it, really. It's mainly, it's new event day. When it's new event day, we talk about the new events, what we do. But before we jump into the events, there's been some other changes to the game that I want to address first. First up. Celestial Island. Um, quality of life button. Yay! I love quality of life buttons. They always make things better, at least for me, because I'm a lazy kind of person. Essentially, now instead of having to click on each and every single one of these, I just collected earlier, so I don't have anything to collect. You just click the claim all button, and it gives you everything that you've produced. Handy. Handy, handy, handy button. Um, another thing has been changed that's not really important is this. Your upgrade screen's a little bit different. Nothing really, you know, game changing, just UI change. Um, I'd love if they continue tweaking this Celestial Island and start making more of a use for these. Um, whether that's through upgraded, you know, keep this going beyond level 20 or whatever it may be, just give us another reason to use these because right now, I mean, it's just, there's no reason to upgrade half your buildings. Like, once you get your, your deal right here, your harvest, um, and your daffodil thingy maxed, you don't necessarily need to worry about Max and most of this stuff because you'll be able to kill everything in the Celestial Island once you start getting when you're at that when you're at that point anyway. You can take it all pretty easily anyhow. Uh, but you don't necessarily need all these extra little buffs like the extra speed, the extra this. I mean, I don't know. There's just there's not really good reason for it. I mean, it's a nice little change the claim all button. I'm all on board for it. But Celestial Island in general needs a little bit more tweaking in my opinion before it's actually like a nice game mode. It's kind of like an afterthought for everybody right now anyway, so, I mean, it could use some love. Um, other than that, there was another change. Down here in this area, we're going to look at our heroes with their gears on. Now, previously, if you were to unequip all on a couple heroes that uh, set gear on, and you were to scroll over to, say, someone like Cruz or someone like uh, my Sigmund has set gear on as well, you'd see little red dots saying that it could be changed for better gear. Um, the thing is, six-star warrior gears always going to be better on Sigma than any other 6-star gear set. Doesn't matter if it's regular 6-star or 6-star ranger. 6-star ninja gear doesn't matter, okay? He needs warrior gear. But before, the game didn't recognize that, and it would throw just whatever set it thought was the most powerful on him, and it could be really annoying when you're re-gearing up heroes having to go through and swap this kind of stuff out. Well, apparently the last update has changed that now. It will automatically put on the correct gear sets for them. Um, the artifacts, obviously, you still have to tweak on your own. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, we'll just go with an oak card on you. Make you a little more tanky. Good job, Bessa. Be a tank. Um, but there you go. Nice little change there. With that said, with those little update improvement dealios out of the way, let's talk about the events. In a Disraeli type area right there. Bam. Mm. Ah. Okay, so great, uh, Grey Dwarf's Blessing, still running. It's just, you know, if you haven't done it last week, you can, you can do it this week. Nice. It usually does run in two-week segments, so it's kind of a handy little deal to have around. Um, other than that, the value packages... Boom. They're pretty standard value packages. A little word of the wise. If you want to you want to snag yourself a hot extra profit orb for a hundred bucks, you just don't buy this offer. You buy one of these and you buy three of these. And it gives you 26 profit orbs. Ooh, cheating the system. That's right. Um, it's not really that important, but it is true. You can get yourself one extra orb by doing it that way. Not a huge deal, but if you're looking for every last bang for your buck, you can do it. Absolutely, but nothing really important there. Just run-of-the-mill, normal profit orb deals. Uh, moving down to the event. This event is actually quite different for a profit summon event. Um, in recent memory, I've never seen one like this, so it's kind of cool. Um, essentially, normally what happens is your profit orb event, like this time we have uh, Fortress and Shadow as the shard rewards. So our 60 and 80 point rewards would have been a Forest and an Abyss. That's what these two would have been. Not the case this time around. It's actually going to give us four total, total, I guess two total light and two dark heroes um, for full completing, which is really, really nice because light and dark heroes are kind of hard to get. And when it comes to making fodder, it's quite difficult to do. Um, all three of these, in my opinion, are strictly pretty much fodder nowadays. Not a lot of dark arthralls in top tier competitive teams that I've seen at least anymore. Even when, it, when you look at teams that have full uh, good versus evil, um, like this guy, you don't see Dark Arthral there, you know, Mim, Aspen, Amuvor. Um, you'd even see, I would say, probably Das Moog in those teams. Another guy right here, same thing. Mim, Aspen, and Amuvor. The GVE teams, um, there's the Abyss teams. I don't know if you have any other GVEs on this server or not. A lot of All Abyss. All Abyss is, is quite popular. Yeah, you just you don't see a lot of Dark Arthrals anymore. It's kind of old news. She's just not really great right now. 
So not a lot of people build her, but for me, that's a good thing. Oops, wrong button. Boop. Is that means I get an extra dark fodder. Woo! On the mini account, that just makes me fart rainbows left and right because I need tons of dark fodder to get my Aspen upgraded. And seeing that this event's going to give me two every time I complete, which I'm going for a total of three completions, and that's going to be six uh, dark heroes just straight up. And that's hot news. That's very hot news. Not to mention you get two light heroes as well. Michelle, um, you do see Michelle built in those top tier GVE teams right now. Um, I assume, personal assumption here i'm not sure if i'm correct or not when the new light hero launches in the chinese new year i assume what you're going to see is these people running the gve teams um will probably swap their michelle out for the new light hero i could be wrong they might ditch faith blade instead i assume bell rain's not going anywhere because she's a freak beast um but i'm not 100 percent sure on that i would just say of the three light heroes I mean, Michelle and Faithblade, I mean, they're they're different. They just do different things. She's better AoE crowd control, so you might see her stay in and see Faithblade get ditched out for hopefully the new light hero's better damage. We'll see how that goes. Um, but for right now, I'm not really planning on building Michelle, so for me, she's still potential fodder. We'll talk more about him in a second. But other than that, pretty solid event. Um, the one thing it does kind of throw a stick in the spokes for me was is I went ahead and cleaned my bag out and left two of every hero because normally in a profitable event you'll get one of every single faction just by completing the event. Um, this time I'm going to be a little bit high and dry, I believe. Actually, no, I'm not. I got, yeah, I'll be a little high and dry when it comes to the grass and the abyss, but it's not a big deal. I've got some rando shards here. I've also got all my summon energy, and this is why I save it. People ask me, Wath, why do you save that energy? I save it for stuff just like this. You can't see the future all the time. And yes, I thought I was 100% ready for Heroic Miracle. Turns out they changed up the rewards for Profit Summon, and now I'm not ready. But because I have this saved back, I should be okay to actually be able to get this done. And even if I didn't, it's not a huge deal. Because I always like to save back some 4-star shards and 3-star shards. I can fuse up a 5-star... A, a forest and a five star abyss just using hero shards so it's another good reason to save maybe a little bit more than you think you need to save just because for situations like this that you just can't tell is going to happen it might pull you out of a pinch it just might be that way um anyways that brings us down to heroic miracle um same as always three heroes from every single faction required um gives you some nice heroic scroll action 24 heroic summons not bad. Some gear. The gear is not super important. Generally, this two-star orange gear, you just fuse its way up to four-star gear. That's kind of what I do, and I use that four-star gear to fuse to five-star gear. And then I go into the Great Wars Blessing and make my six-star and six-star class specific. That's just how I do it. Everybody's different. And then if you do the two light and two dark five-star heroes, you get the three-star gear, which is obviously a step above this. Ooh. Um, but you also get ten profit orbs, which is... a. It, I'm so glad that they started to bring these events around together and pair them. It is the absolute best thing they've done for events in a long time because, it, I mean, it, they chain together so well. I mean, you get orbs to help you complete your orb event from the Heroic Miracle. The orb event helps you complete your Heroic Miracle. It just, it works out. It's a really good pairing of events. I'm glad it works that way. Um, but the big daddy reward here is going to be Valentino. Talk about him in a second, I guess. We can talk about them right now. That's really all there is to talk about other than if you guys are interested the odds of pulling heroes. I've done my maths. I've done my maths. I've read it a couple other times, but I like to keep math around because math makes me happy. doesn't always make me happy. Sometimes it makes you sad. Um, <laughs> especially when you're doing bills, that kind of math. Oh, that kind of math hurts your body. Um, but when you math out what you get for all your summons, um, generally speaking, in 80 orbs or a full completion, you nab 13 faction-specific heroes, um, five stars for that faction. Now you say, whoa, Wrath, that's... That's not 9%. No, it's not. But it does. It doesn't include the random four star shards. That's just the shadow four stars um, that you can fuse up. So you fuse up your shadow four stars plus the shadow five stars you're naturally going to get. It ends up being just about 13 faction specific heroes that you can make. Um, and on top of that, you'll get three random five star heroes from the random five star shards. That's for a normal faction. When you go to light and dark, it changes a little bit because they're dual. Uh, what do you call it, dual faction. It's two different factions in one that you're orbing for. Everything's kind of split in half. So your dark, uh, dark and light four-star chance to drop is, it's kind of a 50-50. You know, it's a 14% chance, I guess, for a dark and a 14 for a light. You just, it's weird. But anyways, when you do 80 orbs in dark and light, generally speaking, you end with seven total light and dark five-star heroes. That's light and dark, not like, you know, it's not 14 heroes, it's just seven. They're split between light and dark faction. Um, and you also get the, of course, the three random five-star heroes as well there because you do get that. You know, you still get five-star shards. Other than that, though, that's kind of the main stuff about the profitable event. Nothing really special. Replacing heroes, 
straightforward. You guys know how to do it. You click a hero, you click replace, and if it's something you want, you keep it. There is no rhyme or reason, no special things to replace to give you what you want every single time. It's RNG. That's how the game works. Everything is based kind of on dice rolls. So there you go. With that said, I guess we can talk about the new hero. Well, not really the new heroes. The heroes on offer for the event, Valentino, Dark Arthedal, and um, Michel. We're not going to talk about these guys because these guys are purely fodder. Little word of wisdom from Wrath because I see it and it hurts my soul when I see it. Never, ever take one of these dudes beyond six stars. It's never worth it, not even one time. It's a horrible decision. If you've done that, you should weep, and I will weep with you. Um, but I've seen it a lot of times with people like, they want that rainbow aura so bad, they'll upgrade stuff like this to seven and eight star, and it's like, dude, no. That hurts you so bad when you're coming back later game, trying to actually build a good dark hero or a good light hero. It just really bites you in the butt, so don't ever do that. These guys cap at six star, and you use those six stars as food for your actual heroes that you want to build. Um, so with that being said, with that out of the way, we'll talk about the heroes real quick. Boop. We'll brief over them a little bit. We're not going to go crazy in detail. Valentino, uh, um, not really a PvE kind of guy. Not a boss fighter, if that's what you're looking for. Not really an Aspen hero either. Um, this guy's mainly for PvP-based teams. He has a lot of crowd control. Decent amount of damage to this crowd control, which is nice. It's something a lot of other uh, crowd control-based units don't have, especially with Overload, giving a little extra damage to him as well, and gives your entire team a chance to stun enemies. It's just a really solid PvP choice. He has really good crowd control, team crowd control, which is great, um, but he also gets pretty solid damage. He has a, a pretty decent carryover rate for when you go to fight bosses, rather than someone like Kamath or Dark Arthedal, I guess, in this situation. He's going to deal a lot more damage than someone like that will. Pretty solid guy. Has some nice reduced damage when he falls below 80% health, which happens pretty early in a match. Helps keep him alive. Helps keep that CC going. Helps his passive keep proccing. It's just... It works. He's also immune to stun, which is never a bad deal. Um, Valentino, primarily a PvP unit. Not really meant for your PvE areas of the game, other than I guess you could say the Tower of Oblivion. Of course, he can work there. With that said, let's move over to Dark Arthur. <laughs> Bang. She's an oldie. <laughs> she's old. Okay, she's very old. She's ancient. Um, but she used to be much better than she is now, and the current meta, spread CC with little damage isn't very important, especially when you get to E3 units where you have huge HP pools, lots of reduced damage. The tiny amount of damage that units like this put out is not that great. Now, is she still useful if you're just looking for AoE crowd control? Yes, she'll still do crowd control quite well, a decent chance of doing it, but also she does steal energy. That's one of the things that's pretty annoying about Dark Arth at all, is that if she does go early and goes quick and gets that active skill off, she can drain energy from enemy teams. And that is one area I would say she's still kind of annoying to fight, because if that chance does proc on one of the units that you rely on, their active skills do a lot of your damage, um, like a Valkyrie, for instance, that can kind of set your team a little bit out of rhythm because your skills aren't dropping like you plan, and it can be a problem. So she does still have use in PvP. I would just say most people are running away from her and going more towards Aspen, who has crowd control on his basic attack and his active skill with tremendous damage potential in both PvP and PvE. Really good units like that. And move with his heavy burst damage. Um, Mim with his nice crowd control and heavy damage plus his dots. You just don't see her as much anymore. Is she a terrible unit? I would say absolutely not. You know, Dark Arthedal is still, in my opinion, one of the better AoE crowd control units in the game, especially compared to your regular faction heroes. She's very fast, which is nice for a crowd control unit. And believe it or not, that energy steal, like I said, it can be annoying. So you got to watch out for it. Other than that, not a whole lot of specialness going on around her. She can reduce uh, enemies, uh, attacker's energy when she takes damage. Again... More energy drain, really annoying. Um, it's just one of those deals. She does get a boost to her attack, but her attack's not really high, and her damage on her skill isn't really high either. She really relies on that skill damage. Um, it boosts her skill to 100%, so double skill damage, to do most of her damage. So her attack stat, while it's not a bad deal, she doesn't do like terrible, terrible bad damage in PvP, it's just not that solid compared to a lot of other units. So for a dark unit, I would say pass, unless you just... If you really like her, then that's up to you, man. If you really like these kind of heroes, build them. That's what the game's about. It's about enjoying what you're doing, not always following the meta, uh, meta, the meta, the tomato. Um, the meta, you know what everybody else is doing, pushing for those top, top, top tier, best in slot teams. If you really like heroes that aren't top tier, like say Sleepless is just your jam, you look at this guy and you're like, oh my god, need it. Build it. 
That's what you should do, because at the end of the day, it's about having fun, peeps. That's what it's all about. Um, with that said, though, we'll move over to Michelle. Michelle. Ooh, look at that. Michelle. She's a thing. All right. Um, Michelle, she's gotten a little bit of changes recently. Not Well, not super recently, but, you know, since I've been playing. Um, she has a pretty high heal, you know, based 1,000% of her attack. That's a lot of heal, and it goes to the ally with the lowest HP. So it's not just a, a decent heal, it's a heal that's going to help the person that needs healing the most, and that's not bad, especially if you pair her with someone like a Bell Rain, when you see that, like in the GVE teams, Bell Rain and Michelle together. Um, that proccing with her extra heal effect is pretty nasty, um, but... She also has a 40% uh, chance to stun enemies, four of them, um, which isn't bad. This nice little spread crowd control, a little bit more utility. So she not only crowd controls people, she also heals them and is going to boost uh, their crit by 20% for three rounds when she gets that heal proc. So that's not bad. So you give a little extra crit, you get a nice little heal bump, so you're back in the fight. And she has a chance to crowd control the enemies to keep them from attacking you for a little bit, get you back on your feet. Not a bad unit, that's why you still see her in top tier teams. Um, she has utility, that's what you like her for. When it comes to boss fighting and stuff like that, I mean, same as Dark Arth at all, not a boss fighter, not even a little bit. Um, they don't deal damage to bosses at all. Uh, mainly, if you just wanted the heal, maybe, but not really. I mean, even then, you'd rather have a Bell Rain or something in that slot. So not a boss fighter in any way, shape, or form. Um, kind of works in the Aspen Dungeon early on. Not so much later game, um, because she just doesn't have enough damage to keep up with waves. Um, it just doesn't work for her. She does have a decent amount of heal for herself, though, to keep herself alive pretty well, but just really lacks damage, and that's what kind of hurts her the most. Um, but not a bad unit. She's pretty fast. Same, uh, same speed as Dark Arth at all. Not a bad deal. Um, but one of the nice things about her is when she dies, she comes back to life. Not a bad thing. Not always a super... I mean, it's never a bad thing to come back to life. Um, but if you do die and come back to life... You don't have your energy. If you, like, you had a full skill saved up and you died, you don't get that skill when you wake back up. So it can throw a rhythm off a bit when she dies. Not a huge deal. I mean, it's just she gets an extra life, 100% HP revive, so it's not bad. Um, but she's also 100% control immune. And this is why you see a lot of them in PvP. You can't stun, freeze, or petrify a Michelle. It just doesn't happen. And that's really handy when people rely on it because... It's not going to happen to you. And she can counter with crowd control of her own and a little bit of heals. It's just, it's nice. It works. It's primarily a PvP hero. Um, some, like I said, some limited use in the Aspen Dungeon and stuff like that as well. Not really for bosses. Um, just kind of, kind of a PvP person. That's what she's all about. Michelle for PvP. It's thing. All right. So there we go. That's pretty much everything knocked out. We knocked it out pretty quick. I feel like we did a pretty, a pretty slick job. Pretty slick job. Um, but... This event, I'm going to be doing a double completion on this account, probably in light and dark, um, just because I really want to get my Gurky swapped over to a Bell Rain. I want to get my 10-star Bell Rain going. It's got to be a thing soon, so it might as well be now. Um, plus, you never know, might get some stuff here to get my Das Moog upgraded as well. Or if I pull some Aspen copies, hmm, hmm, you never know. Things might be a change in... Um, but yeah, that's kind of the game plan here. On the mini account, I'll have 240-ish around, because I'm going to buy a few of them to make sure I can do three completions. Um, I'm probably going to do two in Abyss and one in Light and Dark. Not sold on it yet. We'll see how it goes. I might do one in Abyss and two in Light and Dark, or maybe all Light and Dark. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. But there you go, guys. That's the new events covered, the heroes discussed. It's a thing. We've gone through it. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please make sure. Smash that thumbs up button and show your support if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe as well and tell your friends about it because that definitely helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one.